On today's episode of Watch JR Go, we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're headed out to play with a 2,000 horsepower jet engine. What is going on guys? I'm Watch JR Go, and today we're here with this 2,000 horsepower Dresser Rand jet engine, jet turbine that is. And we're gonna take you around this thing, show you the entire setup, which is wild and immense, and then start this thing up. And it's gonna be really fun to run, I hope. Uh, obviously the wind's picking up. I'm sorry about that in advance. You can see there's a storm coming. There's always a storm coming. But uh, yeah, we're gonna give you a cool walk around, show you everything there is to know about a jet engine on a trailer, why you'd wanna do that, and uh, what it's doing here. And then I just can't wait to get a little bit of fire running through this turbine here. So. We'll go back around to the front and do a complete walkthrough. So we're gonna get my dad in here. He's been working on this jet engine for a little bit. The rest of the parts just came in to get it running and he's gonna tell us all about this jet engine. There's that wind again. All right, here's my dad and he's gonna talk us through this. Well, what does it power? What's it running? Well, this is a uh, compressor, like a giant air compressor. And what it does is it compresses nitrogen to 15,000 PSI. Okay at the back end. So it's used in the oil field service. Gotcha. And it was designed for oil well use. Uh, to reach, to achieve those kind of pressures, it takes a lot of horsepower that is very dependable. So it uses a dresser Rand 2000 horsepower, single element turbine. So it has a single compressor and a single combustion chamber. So what we see as we look at this thing is right here is the what we call the pony motor or the starting engine. This is a 100 horse Perkins diesel diesel engine that is used to drive a, a hydraulic motor right here. Is this hydraulic oil in, I guess? That's, and that's a, high that's pressure. Exactly. Suction in right here. And this is our discharge. So these pumps are used to spin the turbine up to minimum speed so it'll fire on its own. Instead of electric motors like planes? That's exactly right. This is a diesel tank. It's got two of these. Uh, I think it's got 250 gallon or 200, 200 or 250 gallon tanks on it. So it consumes quite a bit of diesel, as you might imagine. This is a giant gearbox. So this is this gearbox handles all the horsepower for the whole machine. You can see here's the jet engine drive shaft there, and this is I guess a reduction gear. Well, it's it's got four different outputs. Okay. So it's a gearbox uh, oh, coupling, it's a one, basically. One so many. it's a one to many. That's gotcha. right. So we drive multiple uh, multiple pumps. All right, so, so there's a pump, there's a pump, here's a pump, there's a pump, I guess? That's right, there's four pumps there. Gotcha. Now what you see back here on the back side, back here on the other side of the diesel, that's the Quinta Flex. That's a five piston, high pressure pump that drives up to, uh, produces the 15,000 PSI. So are so. these, the four pumps are all hydraulic and those are driving this, the Quinta pump that's compressing the nitrogen? Is exactly, that, okay. so to vary the speed of the pump, the turbine runs flat out all the time. Sure. So it, it, and all it does is it maintains exact RPM, which in this case is 16,000 RPM. Sure. And uh, at 16,000, yeah, the hydraulic wheel is either returning to tank or going to the pump. So okay. through variable controls, we can apply the amount of hydraulic uh, fluid going to the compressor to vary the that. speed. We might lose that camera. All right. Since you've got four pumps, you can basically open and close valves to change how much pressure you're feeding the big pump. That's right. Gotcha. So, uh, and that's done through variable pitch wobble, wobble plates that controls the, the displacement of these pumps. Ah. And so by controlling the displacement of the pumps, it controls how much fluid we pump to the, uh, we push to the, uh, uh, to the Kentaplex. So, so then huge hydraulic oil coolers hiding back there. That's right. Those and they're are. hydraulic powered. Yeah, every, everything on this thing is hydraulic powered. The whole gotcha. thing runs off the turbine once the turbine's running. Gotcha. And this is a four cylinder or a three cylinder? That's a four cylinder. Okay. So uh, what we have here on the back of the turbine is a, is a turbine gearbox. Uh-huh. That's this big black part on the back. Sure. Okay. And then see that? Here's your turbine starter. Oh, this is the starter right that here? Starts, that spins it up to speed. Okay. So, um, and then um, this this is your compressor. Gotcha. Right here, that's the air intake. Those big, you got you buy the air filters at O'Reilly's. Is this like water or what? That's they... a drain. Yeah, in case there's any water collecting. Okay, okay. Drain water out. Those two gotcha. filters, we had to put new filters on it. Anyways, it sucks the air in through the primary compressor, pushes it into the combustion chamber. Right here is the combustor. 
So up on top of this chamber right up here, you can see what looks like little pipes going in. Sure. That's the nozzles that uh, uh, deliver the diesel fuel to the combustor. And so this is the combustion chamber, and then your exhaust out the back right here. Here's where we collect the exhaust, and we send it around through this elbow. Send it around this elbow and up through, up through this uh, heat exchanger. So here we have a heat exchanger. Yep. And we can either divert directly to atmosphere and and not go through the heat exchanger, or close, divert the air from the uh, dumping straight to the exhaust, and send it right back here to the outlet. What's the heat exchanger for? Are you saying? That's for heating nitrogen. This thing. Oh, okay. Okay. We're uh, yeah. we're putting nitrogen in the ground, so this heats the gas. Gotcha. It heats the liquid that makes to turn sense. it into a gas for so we can so we can send it out. And then here's the quinta pump, the main one. That's your quintaplex, uh huh? Quintaplex. Yeah, that's quinta, that's the quintaplex drive box it's right there. And here's, your, here's your here's your gearbox. This is your main pump right here. Oh, okay. This great big guy Let's right here. Fit that drive line. That's the, this that's is the motor. Six inches around or something like yeah, that. And a U joint in there. With... It's designed to handle two thousand. <laughs> that's a two thousand horsepower gear motor right okay. there. Okay. Or hydraulic motor. So it's designed to handle the full load of the pump and it drives it into the gearbox. Right up to Back the up here and then this is your crankshaft. Gotcha. For your quintaplex. Cool. So the hydraulic reservoir. And then from here on back, this what is you, all this is all nitrogen. Like two hundred gallons of hydraulic fluid uh, or something? Probably a couple hundred gallons of, of, of pretty of, big. Of fluid. Yeah. So and this is the this is liquid nitrogen storage. So we store liquid nitrogen here so we can get a lot of it in it. That's a refrigerated tank. Gotcha. Once it's full, it stays refrigerated and holds it at low. So at, uh, that's the main pressure control valve. That's your control there. valve. This is discharge right here. To okay. The, to the to the oil field service. Gotcha. So uh, when it was when we got it, uh, it had been sitting for uh, oh I don't know four years or something like that. I think they said, and they couldn't get it to run. So multiple people that looked at it, been working on it, and they couldn't couldn't figure out what was wrong. So they said, Hey, can you fix this thing? I said, I don't know. What's it do? And they explained to me what they wanted it to do, and we started working on it. First thing that they'd already fixed the diesel uh -huh. pony motor, it wouldn't run, so they'd already changed. That uh, looks like a new Delphi yeah. starter or yeah, something. Yeah, well, Delphi. That's 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 your oh injection pump. Injection pump. Gotcha. So they'd already changed the injection pump and the nozzles. Gotcha. So they had the the Perkins running, and it was doing okay, uh, but the turbine wouldn't wouldn't fire. It okay. would uh, it would fire, but not carry any load. Uh, this this turbine under. Under uh, 9,500 RPM has about five horsepower. Okay. So at night, below 9,000 RPM, it's useless. It's it's just a big giant hydraulic load. Sure. And uh, once you pass the 9,400 to 9,500, it starts developing enough compressor pressure that it starts developing horsepower. Sure. As soon as you pass 9,500, and it actually can feed itself air. But below 9,500, the diesel has to feed all the air. Above 9,500. It's in compression mode, and uh, it starts feeding itself, and from there we go. The problem was it wouldn't go. It's not terribly old, and it's in great shape. Yeah. It's just that uh, they couldn't find anybody who could solve the problem. So I just started troubleshooting it and started f tracing out lines and figuring out where pipes went. And as you can see, there's a myriad of hoses. <laughs> there must be like two miles of hydraulic I, line I, in this I traced and traced and traced and tried to get a map in my head, finally designed out a map of how the thing was looking. Was how it was working, and then I got to the governor. So let me show you the governor. What What's this little guy? What's the tiny little pump well, right it there? It actually has a compressor. This is an air conditioner. It looks like an air conditioning this compressor. Is, it's an air Belt drive for cooling the cab. Okay, which, okay. Believe me, would be nice, but it was never hooked up. Oh, all right. So, oh yeah, I see the lines aren't hooked up. It just has drive. Yeah. So it was it was a good <laughs> idea. Just never never got finished. So anyways, you crawl under here, and this is the heart of the controls. It's right here above your head. Gotcha. So this is the governor that's controlled from a PID loop that's based on engine RPM. Yep. So this little lever right here moves back and forth. That's that. This is your lever for controlling engine RPM. So the computer controls that, that lever right there. Here's the control motor. Input. Right? Okay, uh -huh. yep. this, is, this is strictly a motor. Yep. That's all it is, is a Woodward motor. And this is the fuel control valve. It looks like any uh, dampener on a in an HVAC system, sort of, just like it's just a a, a giant damper motor. Sure. Exactly, you're exactly right. So, anyways, there's four lines going into this. There's the in, inlet fuel going in. This is the outlet fuel going up to the uh, nozzles. This is your emergency shutoff valve. And ah. feeds so I just started tracing all this stuff out, and then I finally found this line right here, and I found it returned to the suction of the pump, the diesel pump, 
on the side of the turbine. And I thought, that's not knowing any better. I thought, well, I'm going to put a, a valve in that line for troubleshooting and just see if I might be squirting fuel back to the suction just to see if I was losing pressure. Sure. So we put a ball valve in this line right here while it was running, this uh -huh. line right here. Yep. Put a ball valve in that line right there and while it was running I slowly pinched that thing off and once we got it almost closed all of a sudden the turbine zipped right up to 17,000 RPM. I thought, okay. It now, just put all the fuel in it when you did that basically? Well what it did was I couldn't get over 9,000 RPM. Sure. So it wouldn't go into compression mode. Gotcha. But as soon as it picked up over 10,000 it started zipping up on its own which I thought okay it's going and let's see if it'll go by itself. So I opened it wide open. It spun all the way up and went on its own. Is so this fuel pressure right there. It looks that's, like that's like fuel that? pressure to the nozzle. Gotcha. That's measuring the fuel pressure. We reinstalled this thing on on the machine. Sure. And all we had to do was a minor adjustment to uh, the to rod. Get it to, well, no, the, the, this was actually all calibrated. Oh, okay. We said that this was your compressor discharge pressure. So this thing measures the pressure that the turbine's producing, and it balances oh, the fuel. Okay. Okay. It balances the fuel to the compressor pressure. So gotcha. we just I just made a slight adjust. I didn't know how to do it. I just read the manual and said, well, this must be it. <laughs> Started adjusting and got it and the thing ran just fine. So uh, that's it. So we can start her up. Let's do this. We're going to have to get some shots outside. Yeah, you'll have to stay away from it because it's, <laughs> it's kind of loud. And do these need to be on the battery power? Yeah, or? we'll turn them on. Okay. This is a fully insulated cabin. Look how thick this is. It's probably an inch and a half thick door. Oh, that's... Okay. That looks like a nice ladder. You gotta give them that. Yeah. A nice handrail. Yep. Turn everything on. We're in the cabin. Boost control. I like this. this I assume we just turn this all the way up yeah. and then we win the races. We want full boost. <laughs> So uh, this is the control cabin and when it's, when it's dead, so all we do here to start this thing, now we had a little bit of instruction on this thing to, uh, by the fellow who had operated it. He, he gave us some, uh, a quick tutorial and then from there we've done it on our own. But anyways, we turn the power on. Sure. And uh, is there? you can hear the... It's got a heater? You can hear the fan. Huh. The PLC system, control system down here in this cabinet. It runs on an Allen Bradley PLC. What is it? Yeah, uh, it's, it's a micro logic. Uh, mic no, it's control logic. Oh, okay. We wait for this thing to come up. It's gonna. It might get a little noisy. Sometimes it takes a couple of uh, seconds, but we already hear the fuel pump running. So it's charging it with fuel right now. To uh, it's got an electric fuel pump that charges the system to begin with, and then that uh, electric fuel pump can be turned off once it's running. And the turbine fuel pump, which you can't really see, but it's straight back in there on the left side. Gotcha. Uh, that turbine, it's a mechanical pump, it's driven off of the, directly off the turbine gearbox. Looks like the fuel levels, is this fuel level for everything? That's the fuel level for the main tanks. It's just barely got, we've, we've consumed a lot of fuel testing it. But, gotcha. Uh, um, all right, and these are the four? This is all for the, this is all for the valve control. For the main pump? For the, yeah, for the, for the Quintaplex. Gotcha. So now this thing started up. And then we're going to be ready to start the diesel. So I'm going to go ahead and start the diesel pony motor. So I got to hold the, I got to hold this button in to start it. That thing comes right up. <laughs> it rolls give cool. It, give it a little diesel. Okay. Well, lots, lots of oil pressure. And then we'll let that thing warm up just a second. Get rid of our alarm. This is the uh, big, big dog. Big dog. <laughs> Flameless nitrogen unit. Now this is a cold start, it hasn't rained today, so I like to warm it up just a little bit here to make sure the diesel's getting warm before we start putting the load on it. What do you think this thing cost originally on delivery? Uh, it's millions. Is it? So yeah, if you're interested actually, in buying this. Actually, I'd like to get about 1.5 <laughs> out of it. 1.5 million is going great. 1.5 million. <laughs> so, so we'll speed this up, about 2200 RPM. Again, it's under no load at the moment. It's just, uh, we're just spinning her up. This is a mechanical cable throttle, I assume? That you're... Cable throttle, yeah. Oh, I, can, I can push the button in and drop it. Oh, okay. Or I can pull it out, but if I unscrew it, it just keeps... Slowly turning. pulling it. And I can precisely control it. What I've learned is it don't have to be exact. I just got to have over 2,000 RPM. Gotcha. So I'm going to get that up to where she's nice and warm. I got 50 PSI of oil pressure. It just purrs, just like this. 
Now we're going to go into diagnostics to test it. Urban system. And here's all my controls for running it. Gotcha. So I'm going to hit start. Okay. And if it works the way it should, I hit start. It should hit. It, don't, it says stop head. Yeah. It should say stop. Stop. But it's so bad. But I see just hitting start sequences all of these in order, right? Should, well, up until the fuel shutoff. Okay. And then I yeah. have to turn on the main fuel shutoff, which I showed you up at the front. Gotcha. And uh, so I'll turn that on in just a second. This so is that exhaust dump where it doesn't go through the heat exchanger, exactly. right? Exactly. If I close that, then I force it all through the heat exchanger. Gotcha. And uh, pretty simple once you get it up. There, I'm already showing 26 PSI of lube pressure. Gotcha. So right now, the diesel is pumping lube through the bearings of the turbine to make sure that all my, my turbine gearbox is fully wetted. Sure. And uh, looped up. So I, I'm building I'm building temperature, so I'm ready to start rolling. These guys all work. Oh, wow. Look at that. Cabin lights. And, that's fancy. If we, if we hear an alarm, we push this button. So what I do is I wrap this right around here. It's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of noisy in here when that goes off. So sure. I just wrap that, we just push that button if we hear the lower. All right. So this is how you spin the turbine. Okay. I'm making good temperature here, so we're ready to load it up. So we're gonna take it up to about 2,000. Uh, at 2,000 RPM, the igniter comes on. And at 4,000 RPM, I open the main. Okay. And you'll know if it's lit off as soon as we open the main because you'll instantly see exhaust gas temperature build. Going to the thousands where it should well, be. It runs up to about 920, 920 Fahrenheit. Gotcha. 900 to 950 Fahrenheit. Oh. Uh, 920 is our target gotcha. about. And uh, uh, we might see a little vibration as we go through the critical speed on the, on the turbine, spinning it up. And uh, she should carry herself. I mean, if, the, if I did my job right, this thing will just go up, spin right up to 16,000 RPM. If not, we'll have to reshoot this. <laughs> we're ready to go, so we're going to start motoring the turbine. So I turn this in, and this buries the uh, fluid. You can hear it start to make some noise. And we're going to start pulsing right here. You can see I'm, I'm starting to get some turbine rotation. Gotcha. With the pulses, you can hear it starting to squeal a little. And then she's going to start to load up. Then it's going to take off. Now, I'm going to hit start. Okay. It looks like it's dry. Okay, now we're starting. Okay. Here we go. So, there's, there we got RPM. Well, she's <laughs> rolling already. I'm firing. This is just a cold start. Here we go. We're going to pass 4,000. We're gonna open the main. There we go, we got fire. 150. I want to get over 9,500. Oh, I just had a flame out. Ah. I gotta go down. So you can restart quickly after a flame out, unlike a plane where you have to spend a little time. Yep. I get her down under 2,000. Gotcha. I don't know why I had a flame out. It might, might, might have been just some air. Sure. But I've had this happen on initial starts. Once we got it running, once, once we started it two or three times, it never flames out. But sometimes we'll flame on the, on the initial run out. If we got a little, this thing's really bad about air. Ah. It's taking us quite a while just to get the air out of the system. If you guys are wondering why a nitrogen pump is powered by a jet engine, it's because they're extremely efficient and they can run for just outrageously long times after they've been started, like years at a time, if you don't ever shut them down. Here we go, we're going up again. We're firing, we gotta pass 4,000. I gotta keep my engine RPM up on my Perkins. Sure. I wanna keep her up to 2,200. Spin it up, we got good pressure. The 35 PSI, we got nozzle pressure. That's low. Sure. That tells me we got an air problem. There she goes. We're firing. It's trying this time. There's some fuel pressure. Now we got air. 
trying to go. Everything well, it's got. I'm trying to make sure I don't overload my engine. Right. While the diesel, while the jet picks up speed. 8,000 though. Get there. I got to hit 9,500 for it to go on its own. That's good. That's good fuel pressure. That's the diesel pressure. That's how much pressure we're putting on the nozzle. That's the turbine. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk it on up. Sure. That's 9,500. here but that's going to come down once we start moving more air sure. at 13,000 you'll hear the diverter valve flow there she goes she's on her own nice open and open yep 10,000 rpm okay now i should be able to completely unload the pony motor sure it should go off on its own okay the pony motor is out yep she's carrying her all on its own at 13,000, you'll hear the pitch change when the compressor valve, it's got a diverter valve that's dumping sure. excess compressor pressure to the atmosphere. Yeah. Still going? Almost there. There you hear the diverter starting to close. Yeah, yeah. It looks like an exhaust valve with a spring on it. Sure. You'll hear it slam shut. There it went. Now we're heading straight towards 16,000. I can't do anything at this point except shut it off. Right, if something happens. Okay, the governor's got it. Nice. I assume it'll stabilize as they- It'll stabilize. You can see the pressure bearing. Yeah, 400 PSI almost, that's 350. The, well, that's the governor. Oh, okay. Modulating the pressure to the nozzle. Sure. And now it's got the pressure. So you're down, you're, you're down to, what, 20 RPM bearing? Yeah. Not even that. 10 RPM or 5 RPM. Really clean, of course, yeah. So it just uses a simple VID to measure engine RPM and to control that governor. That's it. Now I can slow this guy down a little. Yep. Yeah, you should be able to shut the pony motor completely off. Right. But if I shut the pony motor off, I overspeed right now, and that's I got to get that Kinsaflex running before we kill that. Oh, because there's not enough load on it or something. Not enough load on it. Gotcha. So I just leave that running. But that's it. Yep. This awesome. is this was a successful repair. This is what we were shooting for. Was to get this thing, because it wouldn't do this before. Sure. It would go up to 8,000 stalls no matter how much effort you, it would have killed that pony motor and it couldn't get it just because the, 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 the jet could never the turbine, take off. Yeah. The turbine wouldn't develop any horsepower to help with the compression. Sure. That's it. Um, she'll run like this the rest of the night until we run out of diesel fuel. Gotcha. Are all these for the nitrogen? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, those, yeah, I see that. That's your, that's your pressure in the tank. Gotcha. That's your pressure going out. Boost. That's the hydraulic oil to the pump. Gotcha. This oh. is, this is all for the keep the place control. control. Yeah. Oh. It's so loud! I can't hear myself talk! Go push the fuel control shut off button. Yeah. Go kill it. On the touch screen. nicer in here you can actually talk this is a really well-built cab okay so we'll kill the deep kill the pony turn off the lights the battery kill the lights kill the power nice that's it 
Still spin, spinning down one minute, two minutes after probably. Big ladder. Doesn't need the batteries here. Whew. And that's it. And we are we are right on time too. The rain just started coming down while we were doing that. How much nitrogen does this hold? <laughs> No. A lot? <laughs> it's a bunch. I assume all of these are to like cool nitrogen going in or? Oh, those are vaporizers. Oh, okay. So this is just atmospheric vaporizer for uh, uh, flashing the liquid into a gas. Gotcha. Huh. Places to, this is where you park all your fittings. Oh. For hooking up to the outlet. Gotcha. Those. So, yeah, this thing, uh, it's gotta be filled with liquid. With liquid nitrogen. Sure. Before we run. Anyways. Huh. That's what, that's what starting it up looks like. It was a fun project. I'm glad we were successful at making it run. So is the owner. Yeah, I they, bet. They want to sell it. <laughs> this is outrageously hot over here too. And uh, they, they wanted to put the thing into service and get somebody to making some money with it. So sure. there's, I don't know of many machines that will put out 15,000 PSI on eight wheels. Sure. And you all keep asking, so here it finally is. The 420 engine is back from the machine shop. These cylinders are absolutely beautiful. Look at that, you can see the cross hatch in there. These are all as fixed as much as they could be fixed. And uh, we've got the oversized pistons ready to go. All the parts are right there. New freeze plugs are in it. So it is ready for assembly and paint. And um, here's all the parts, look at that. Cam. Brand new pistons, brand new, yeah, everything's brand new. I don't know what else you need to know. So there's the answer that you guys were looking for on where's the 420, it's coming soon. We're gonna assemble it right here in the next couple weeks. Well, thanks for showing us the jet engine. That's sure. pretty fun. Pretty cool to start that thing up. And thank you guys so much for watching. That is it for today. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you wanna do. And I will talk to you next time. And we are out here with the big forklift that you guys have all begged and begged and begged to talk about. And it's stuck. Obviously not a great place for it to sit with the Codex box this high in the air.